lawnmower broke, waiting for it to come back from the shop. But as you can see, we are honoring our part of the agreement, our part of the lease. As a disabled person, I'm the one who, even as a disabled person, I'm the one who just created this problem for what I'm able to. But here, look at the condition. It's supposed to be painted, not have any peeling paint. No rust. See? No rust. And and they say that this meets code. Matter of fact, they, they swore on a document that this meets minimum code. So property standards is clear. But I mean they could say whatever they want when nobody's checking. And when they check, they cover for them. Right? Look, see, it's not even painted. And, oh, here, let me show you a shoe. You notice that? Sorry, I'd do the other one, but I'm just going to show that it too is loose. And rusted. And, and don't forget the cracks in the pavement that's bringing mold and mildew into the basement that has been reported already and asked them to fix. That is bringing mold and stuff in the... Oh, I got pictures. You can see the pictures. And uh, bro broken, uneven concrete. And non-level driveway. Hazards everywhere. Cracks. Water damage, no window well, took off the side door, cracks of the foundation. See, stress out of the quarter because this quarter of the house over here is sinking. There's stress fractures there, there, here. The photos are, are and it runs all the way along. The photos are online. Here's how they fixed the uh, how they fixed the old problem. They just made it look like the document, and they created a new hazard. But either way, it's still not code because they're supposed to have a handrail and a guardrail. It's over a foot, and, and there's no handrail on this one, which they were supposed to have. That's the one where the handrail was supposed to be put on. Is that one there? Anyway, just show it again. So this is upkeep of our property. We, uh, we keep our end of the bargain. We honor our part of the lease, including had the rent ready to be picked up for the last several months. We had the rent ready to pick up for the last several months because it's unlawful to have rent collected or cause it to be collected. But now we have a definitive proof. Thank you, Ms. Edu from the Landlord Tenant Board. She thinks she's operating on judicial immunity. They all do. Judicial immunity says they can get away with anything, especially being unlawful, but that's not what the Supreme Court of Canada says. So anyway, showing you again. So again, who cleaned all this stuff up? Did we have the landlord or landscape company come do it? No. That's what I do, because that's our agreement. Our agreement is for us to do our part. And we go above and beyond, even in spite of the fact that we have been held siege by this unlawfully operating administration that is now proven guilty of malfeasance. And you're saying, oh, because this is from the work order. This is our fence, 98B. Okay? It's definitive. Here we are in the backyard 98 feet. I'm going to traverse the fence. You see? Well, first of all, here, look at this. You're not allowed to have different materials for a fence. You're not allowed to have a rickety old fence like that. But in fact, the landlord owns that property next door, too. And that structure in the backyard, I could push it with my hand, it would fall over and kill somebody. That fence is made up of two different. Anyway, it's, it speaks for itself. Here you go. So let's go along this fence. Oh, we got a nice six foot high fence. 
going along here. Oh, and, and, and then all of a sudden we got over here. Somewhere along the line, this back fence matched the height of this fence because that means this is our fence, right? In 98B, it goes all the way from there. The fenced in backyard is 98B. 100A was never fenced in, even though it was promised to be. But they made a mistake because they're, they've got judicial immunity. So we were asking for both properties to be inspected and as an association. And they didn't. They did ours only, and they only did what I pointed out, not top to bottom, because an inspection is from top to bottom. Here's the results. That's what needs to get to code. You've got so many days to do it. Here we are. That way, when the process is finished, on behalf of the taxpayers, that property, as of that date, is legal standing, as it should be, and that is documented. And that's supposed to be part and parcel of the legal uh, requirements for obtaining an occupancy permit known as a residential rental license in the city of Waterloo. Here's where it gets interesting though. This is where it's the same as Rim Park deal and I would say even the the hydro boondoggle that they did because it appears what we've collected over the evidence is that this is their business plan. When let me, I'm going to explain it as quickly and easily as possible. We have committees, uh, research and everything, go in to say, and, and people coming forward saying we need this bylaw. Here's the reasons for it. Here's the reasons why we support it. Here's, you know, everybody studies it in the council. They make decisions. They come up and they go, okay, here is the hard and fast last aspect of this law that we are now enacting into law. And the Corporation of the City of Waterloo acting on behalf of not just the City of Waterloo, but also the province, the region, municipality, which City of Waterloo, Kitchener, and everybody else is part of. So this is where they're trying to say they're not the sum of their parts. And even when you get provincially, it is Minister Clark who is responsible for all public buildings, any and all buildings, any and all new construction. You can't fart in, in a direction without them coming up and finding out which direction it came from, what you had for breakfast, and how much they're going to charge you for it in this province. So when they say they're open for business, this is what they're doing. Council is on one side, and they have the lawyer come down, they say, sign it into law. This is now law, which we will now all uphold. The residential rental license saying that you must meet these criteria before you can get granted a license. And no person shall give false or misleading information or obstruct an investigation. That includes, and person is described as individual, group, business, corporation, or government. Because the corporation of the city of Waterloo, corporation of the city of Kitchener, corporation of the region of Waterloo, corporation of the province. And again, they're trying to say they're not the sum of their own, all parts, but the legal department is. That's why it's a legal issue and it's by design. We asked every aspect for AOTA access in order to put our evidence forward. And there's, in every aspect of this, whenever they shut it down, it's about not allowing you to have your evidence in or stalling that evidence. Or I was listening to the show on 570 Chime, or uh, whatever, 570 News, and I tuned in just at the time when there was uh, Michelle Coyle from Rosemount uh, neighborhood was described, she was in the middle of describing her experience. And she's a homeowner paying, I think she's a homeowner who's paying taxes and also with a group of others. I didn't catch all of it. But she was describing how she felt when, because she was saying she went through this process, was working with them. They said this hearing came up. Everybody showed up for this hearing and then they said, sorry, it's postponed. They left and then sometime, somewhere down the road, she went to find out when this hearing is and she found out the decision had been made without them and without their input. And he asked her, how did it make you feel? Well, it's called notwithstanding. This is all about the notwithstanding clause in the Constitution. Notwithstanding is a legal term. And notwithstanding is how they treat you when you're there. So when I was getting arrested, I was notwithstanding. What I had to say what my, through this whole process, disabled people are notwithstanding. That our standing is described by and through arch disability management and the system. What the system allows. And anybody who tries to step out of that is punished. That's what this is. But this is all illegal and unlawful. 
So for four hundred fifty dollars, and why aren't we able to go on the marketplace and just pay somebody to come and get one? Because it tells the truth. Anyway, our charge is this: this property does not meet rental license bylaw standards. It doesn't meet property standards. They are allowing this these people to operate an unlawful business under their license and their collusion. We have gone through the tribunal system. I'm, I've even gone to Human Rights Legal Sports Center, but what you need to understand is this. We've been there before. All these little places you go to, Independent Living Center, Human Rights Legal Sports Center, uh, Legal Aid, is all paid through the same thing, through the same fund. So they, and that's why they're all doing the same thing. Denise was a, is a person who's on ODSP. She deserves proper representation. The lawyer she consulted in, in our matter at the at the uh, at the community legal center told gave her a whole write up of what she could do. Handed her a whole package said here. And our, her question was, well, why can't you do it for me? She's not allowed to. Why? Because they got a game going here. So you got the, the lawyer signing contract on behalf of the city saying this is law. So then the same thing, it was Steve Ross, was the solicitor of record at the time. Uh, he went around and he's also the guy who solicits, solicits new business for the city. And everybody's been watching these buildings pop up, right? Well, these buildings are, are one-stop shopping. Their contracts are the contractor, developer, they got property management on board. They got financing on board. They've got uh, everything locked up. They lock up all the all the municipal stuff, and it's go. And once they get that go, then it's like break ground, and doesn't matter what happens. I think that's what happened. I, again, I haven't been able to pay attention to all of it, but I know I understand the process. So, uh, if you're watching this, Michelle, that's what they did to you. The same thing. They're doing it to everybody because Rim Park. The boondoggle in, in Mississauga with hydro or this, there's no difference because it's all controlled by municipal act. And these people are, are going out signing contracts, knowingly signing illegal parts of contracts because every contract in Ontario, if there's part that's illegal, only that part gets struck down. But what you're not getting is that they talk about how much it costs to do RIM, but they didn't tell you how much they collected in legal fees. So my contention is this, we have proof that they are deliberately doing this, that there is collusion amongst inter, inter agencies. They are the sum of their parts and they're acting as the sum of the parts when it comes to protecting their own interests and putting us in this legal issue situation. They are not allowed to go and uh, they are doing these landmines deliberately because where do you got to go? You got to go to service places. You got to go get lawyers. You got to go hire the system to go and, and get these landmines taken out when they should never have been negotiated in the first place. And they are there to undermine the very laws that they swore to uphold. So this is at contract level and all this other stuff about, oh, it's long-term care homes and stuff. No, that is, this is all in the purview of Minister Clark. And this is a criminal offense of malfeasance. The action against them is misfeasance, and I am sending a letter to the CAO of Waterloo City and the region of Waterloo and to the province, Ian Kerr, about this deliberate abuse of process, which is also collusion. And I'm giving them seven business days. We have given them the, they have received $44,400 to date in unlawful rent on this property, including $1,200 we were ordered to pay without being notified of the hearing. We found out at the last minute, ex party, it's called without hearing, without notice. And that's unusual because landlord tenant is responsible to send the documents directly to us. On the last two, they did not in any way, shape or form. And I'm still looking in to see whether they did it somewhere else. So Mr. Kerr, you're talking, this is not, this is, we would like to cooperate with your people, but they lie, cheat and steal and they're trying to, they're breaking the law. So you have seven business days. We also gave them May's rent in good faith because we are saying they are making a claim of just under $12,000 in unpaid rent, which most is sitting here in a money order ready for them to pick up for the last several months. Which has already been given as evidence to landlord tenant board. 
accepted as evidence in the last hearing, November 4th, by Landlord Tenant Board, even though we did not, and, and really funny because Atlas Property Group is the one bringing that forward, they dropped everything. They didn't serve anything on us they were supposed to, and they quietly went away, and then the order was, well, we just dismissed this because they didn't show up, even though they had our evidence in rebuttal. And we were asking for disability, and we sent them, this has been sent many times, so they know what's going on. So seven days, I'm telling the CAO, you have seven business days to get a minimum standard inspection on 98B at the very least. And we are asking you to enforce the order or prove that the order has been enforced to 100A. We are asking for you to collect that over million dollars in potential fines and back taxes. And we are asking for you to register that work order immediately with the land registry office because who controls land registry? Municipal affairs. And why would they not put the land registry, We why would they prevent us? They said we needed a lawyer to put the order on, which is a lie. And if it's not a lie, well then it's collusion because the reason what there's only one reason why that lawful unfinished order is being prevented from being put on the record because it would be let, registered as a lien on the property and this is where it involves every taxpayer because not only does it they tripled the rent there they not only did not meet standards for over two years while he operated unlawfully before we found out he's been operating unlawfully for the last two years with a work order outstanding being protected by the people that are supposed to be upholding the law, and there's over a million, so the proper value has not been assessed there, which means it would be as a lien, which means anybody going for a loan or financing on that property, there would be a lien to satisfy first, and they would not be able to get the full value of that property. Let me tell you, since we were forcibly removed unlawfully, they probably tripled the rent there, which means they've tripled the value of that property potentially. With, and what's the ask? Because they're doing another development deal because wh why else are they cutting us from, off from the public record? Because I'm a person who knows what to look for. Then you have to ask yourself, this freedom of information business, you used to be able to walk into these departments with what you knew and keep it to yourself, say, where do I find this record? And you'd go find the record, and if it was there, you would say, I'd like a copy of this, please. You'd go up to the front, and if you wanted just a regular copy of a certain amount, but if you wanted a certified copy that, for a court or proceeding, they would also fulfill that purpose there with the notary public. And you would pay an extra fee to take that and you would take it away and they wouldn't even ask you what you needed it for. This, my 17, 18 years, I've got this all on recording. I am the most, I turned into the most dangerous person because of my disability. Press play. Every level of government. Go see the videos. It's a legal issue. Hey, uh, Michelle, what were they telling you? It's a legal issue, right? Go hire a lawyer. Well, what, guess what happens when you hire a lawyer? They're prevented from doing the right thing. And it's not them. That's our system. It's called municipal prison system. Because everything to do with security of person is tied to a tribunal. And it's Tribunals Ontario that's doing this. We notified Human Rights Tribunal. Even with all the obvious evidence of that this is human rights, you know, just because I can't put it down in context and form and scope, they're preventing us from doing it at every level, including in the court system when I was assaulted. I know George Floyd, I get that. And family and all that, you know, the whole point is to keep everybody off balance, but you know what, it doesn't stop the truth. And it's not about blame, it's about responsibility, taking responsibility. It's the only thing I got left. I have been deliberately denied access at two different clinics. And I've been told, and I was assaulted at one and almost extorted money from because it was to originally Onyx Medical Care. March 10th, I went there, I set up for my usual disability thing. They had done my disability uh, appointment for my disability tax credit and that the last time with the doctor that was there. I thought that was the same doctor I was getting, same protocol. They started going, oh, we don't have records. And I said, okay, well, I'll send the records to you. So I made sure that there was lots of preparation time. And I also informed them that because of my disability, I'd be recording. They said I wasn't allowed to bring in a, a caregiver or anybody because of COVID. 
So anyway, I go in there, I have this appointment. I tried to assist him like I did the last time. Because last time I went in there, we did the same thing. The doctor looked at it, he, lo he examined me. He says, okay, well, as far as this other stuff, I need at least another couple days. Just leave it with me because i got other appointments and I'll get back to you. We went, yeah, no, sure, sure, no problem. And that was completed and I got it done. And then it was rejected by RevCan anyway. And when they went to go and confirm it with him, he didn't bother following up. So I'd been dealing with RevCan because of that, for that doctor. But anyway, because we had done the process before, I entered into that process again, thinking it was going to be the same thing. And instead, I got a different doctor. And he was questioning me and, and going, oh, this and that and everything else. And I'm going, look, doctor, I really didn't, I don't want, I got PTSD. I don't need this. Are you going to do this or not? And he's like, basically, his, his idea was he needed more information. And he was just confrontational, wouldn't even cooperate. He didn't even examine me. You know, he laid one finger on me because I sat there. I said, there's a thing with my neck where you go, is that normal? And he's like, he, he barely even set, felt it. And he goes, yeah, that's fine. Which is, anyway, he didn't give me an examination, but here you go. So I'm, I'm getting assaulted where, to the point where I have to leave. Because I'm not going to, I know where this is going and I'm going, I've been here before. I, I, no, this is not good. I'm leaving. So I go to get up and leave. I left him with all the documentation. I gave it to his secretary or whatever. He left first because I had to get ready. I had to get my stuff together. So I got my stuff together. He's off doing this thing. I go out to the secretary. I'm getting ready to leave. And she goes, oh, that'll be $100, please. I'm like, excuse me? I went there for the disability tax credit, which he was saying he didn't have enough information. He didn't even bother examining before. He just basically assaulted me in the refusal, dis dismissed me, and I'm walking out the door with this lady, and he handed her the documents, but they're ready to give me the disability tax credit signed for a hundred dollars well i didn't think of that right away because i just sat there and went oh okay well i'm sorry i i started to say what we say when we're disabled which is i'm sorry i'm disabled what i'm asking is that this would cause financial hardship and please is there a way that we can reduce the cost or waive it and that's all you do you ask that question the answer is either yes or no so i start saying that and the doctor rushes out of wherever he was he comes literally running out right in front of me within a foot of my face and starts you're arguing with my girl because she said no i'm not and i stood a step back and i'm saying i'm sorry sir but uh no i'm not and uh you're just not letting me finish saying what i'm saying because they got this thing and you can see it with trudeau as long as they didn't hear it you could write it down you can send it you could post it on youtube to their attention that they don't know a thing because I didn't hear it, I didn't see it. I see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil because I am evil. Anyway, there's a lot of serious problems with Canadian legal issues, I guess. But the biggest thing is this. Judicial pr uh, immunity is granted through judicial privilege. The municipal military is a federal thing. They basically declared undeclared martial law. And the, re the only reason why the military is in there is because they can be ordered to shut the hell up. And it's whatever they say it is. And even in spite of all that covering up, we still have the, this report. And all this report reveals is what's been going on all the time. They are more interested in debt and dependency than in doing their duty under law. This is a failure of the municipal act system because of things like this. What is overlooked, and it's oversight, not overlook. It's called enforcement, not exploitation. And I, this is directly to the Attorney General of Ontario and Canada. The military, that is cooperation. That is a cooperative thing. So when they need it, it's done. Federal puts down edicts when it comes down to COVID and other things. Where, who is the one that enforces that? Anybody confused as to what the enforcement department is of that kind of action? Anybody confused as to if you're in the city of Kitchener or Waterloo or anywhere in this province, what is the part that does the enforcement? Municipal. You have seven days, business days. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a date. You have it to, matter of fact, I don't care. I'm going to tell you what, there's a hearing they've already put through for another hearing on an illegal order, unlawful order, without serving us any papers at all. They didn't allow me to speak. And they set up the order in such a way that it's almost impossible to meet. 
because they've set up that on June 11th, we are going to have an eviction from here, regardless of anything. So our last stand is this. You have seven business, actually no, you have until, well, I don't even know what the date is today. What is it, the 13th or something? 12th, anyway, you have until the 20th. No, let's make it the 21st of May. If this property and this, I would say these properties, but at the very least, if 98B does not have a full property inspection, by May 21st, that is proven malfeasance and we are bringing a tort action and asking the public to join us for a tort action and misfeasance against the Crown. And then that will be followed up with, we need to get the Crown, this criminal enterprise out of Canada. They are based on judicial privilege of the Crown. And I have met that Crown. And all you need to do is go look at that video of when, at the end of the video, where they invited me down under the pretense of help. And in less than a... Mm. Anyway, go see it. Yeah, see the one where they did the... Because the unlawful arrest, the reason why it's unlawful, if their landlord is acting unlawfully, no lawful entity, including the Waterloo Regional Police, can act against or with that person in an unlawful act that arrest was unlawful not only in the context of human rights but in the aspect of how i was arrested and they they used my disability against me and against us to create the situation they prevented us from any kind of access to any kind of services or anything because of the context Einstein said, everything is about perspective and context. Where you are standing at your point in time, in that time and space. Well, here we are, people. I'm not doing this for me. I need medical help. I have been turned away. This is all controlled by municipal affairs and the attorney general and solicitor general and premier. You've already, Dave Williams, I am saying openly now, David Williams and the coroner's department is actively participating in what appears to be a cover-up in the wrongful death of John Lichty in July of 2019 at the CCICU department of St. Mary's, where he entered in, at the end of June for a heart operation. He signed on the papers that the doctor was to make the decision. There was nobody else. No substitute decision maker was def dis defined. It was the doctor. That is clear on the record. They were acting improperly. For two weeks or more, they were asking Kerry, who they thought was his common law partner, just because they were so close as, as roommates, they thrust her in this position and started saying, you have to make these decisions. And she's stuck in this quagmire of, oh, she has to make decisions. So she makes her best decisions. Then they sit there and they ping pong it anyway it doesn't matter because all of that I was I was asked to help her and getting it dealt with because it looked like he was going to die and we were trying to get things in order in order to make sure things were taken care of appropriately and which meant we needed a document from the hospital they had put her in this position of you are substitute caregiver you which means common law which means under those rights she would have access to everything but as soon as we started asking for it, all of a sudden there's this resistance. We're like, what's going on? And all of a sudden we end up, I go to the powers that be, and in that process, they arrange a meeting with the doctor and everybody. And in that meeting, because of my disability, I'm allowed to record it. So I'm recording it, and I'm sitting beside the lady who's like the liaise between the legal department and the patient, patient relations. And in the discussions, uh, you know, they're sitting there going off. They say, well, you know, they're trying to pressure Carrie. And she's going, well, she thought she did something wrong. So she's going, yeah, I guess. And when she said that, all of a sudden, there's uh, the lady beside me sits there and shows me the form that it's not signed. That the problem is Tom signed for the doctor to make the decision. And I immediately went, excuse me. And this meeting ended up stopping. But anyway, they, they ended up, so... It was revealed that they, but she, I said, you know, office, and she, they were saying the office of the lawyer advisor was, was advised. And this is why this meeting was called. But no office of the lawyer advisor representative was there. And what the office of the lawyer advisor is, is that whenever there's a legal issue with a person who is not covered by a legal thing, they step in on their behalf, supposedly, to protect their legal interests. And that's their sole job. 
So at some point, this lady from patient relations at uh, St. Mary's went to uh, legal support uh, or legal people and they, they notified them. Well, the minute they notified them there was a problem, that lawyer had one job, one job only. He was to have everything stop immediately because he was acting on John's behalf. And John's directive is right there saying it was the doctor who was supposed to do it. That is a medical error. So the two weeks that the, that the staff of the CCICU are fighting with everything they got, pumping them through with mega drugs worth how much money? Shocking them multiple times back to life. Torture. Everybody's held in limbo because these fucking assholes are hiding the facts. They're being traumatized. We're being traumatized. They don't even know the, the outcome. That they were right. And what does that say for protecting the worker? What does that say about protecting their rights as the people who are fighting to save these people's lives are now in the middle of a pandemic doing the same thing, trusting that their administration has got their back, that the law is here to protect the fucking people who uphold the law, not the ones who break it? The minute he died, they flipped the tables. All of a sudden, we're nobody. We're not next to Ken. Get the, you know, and we tried to do anything. You're not next to Ken, even though we are all witness to it. I went to follow up with patient relations, and they, again, same story. So I extricated myself, but, you know, again, we're following up. I, I went and I complained to the coroners. I said they need to look into this. They weren't happy about it. I got a call from the coroner directly from St. Mary's, and that, that call is very interesting indeed. All recorded, all of which he knew was recorded. Whether he knew it was recorded or not doesn't matter. But the biggest one was when I called the coroner's office because what happened is we had to go to coroner's office in Toronto and Hamilton, dick back and forth between the two. David Williams is in Toronto. He was he just became a coroner at head coroner at the time, I think, a little bit before that. But because uh, this is 2019, so I call. I, I finally get the manager in Hamilton to call, and that in, that call is interesting too. But anyway, we have the calls recorded, and they were sitting there saying just basically, "Well, you know what he died of? He died of a heart attack, right?" There's no need for an autopsy. You know, they did all that. So we're going, no, I'm sorry, we insist. Um, so they, I don't know what, they, they ended up having to, you know, they held him up for weeks. Uh, Henry Walser Funeral Home, they were very good. I recommend them to anybody because this was a difficult situation. They did the best they could. What happened was the, the hospital and the powers that be immediately went, well, we don't have any rights, even though they treated us like that, put us through that, and they immediately searched for next of kin. John wasn't too uh, attached to his next of kin. He had been kind of arm's length distance for whatever reasons. But they finally tracked down his aunt in Cambridge, really nice lady. Um, and I guess they started doing things through them. So we were notified through the funeral home that there was somebody else making a claim. We're like, okay, we're just here to make sure everything's done properly, that he's taken care of. And we, we ended up cooperating. They were really good people. They ended up uh, cooperating. We were all working together to try and get this done. Uh, and, and we, you know, it was all about Tom, or John. He went, he went by his name, Tom, his middle name, I wrote, but anyway, uh, John. Uh, and, and it was beautiful. Especially given the way that it ended, but uh, we're at the we're at the Lester funeral home going through the arrangements and that, and uh, we're explaining. For, it's the first time we meet, and we're both sides of this. So she was wondering why certain things were going on. We got to a point where we had a break, and she says, "You don't mind if I ask you some questions? We're like whatever you need to know." And she said, "You know," uh, she asked about what happened. We told her, and when we were done, she says, "That's interesting because basically I'm I'm, I'm abbreviating." But her, her comment was, she was wondering why they asked her some, like now she knows why she asked her that question. They asked her that question about his autopsy and we're going, what do you mean? And she said, they actually said, well, you, again, the same tact, you know what he died of, it was his heart. So you, he's, it's been long enough. Why don't we just cut out his heart, we'll break, send his heart for the autopsy and you can have his body to deal with. And we're like, what? We understood why, because it's about the autopsy. But they're not allowed to do that, are they? 
And thank God she's Catholic. And she went, no, I'm sorry, that doesn't sound right. And she said, I want the whole autopsy performed. So an autopsy was performed. But the point is this. There's that judicial immunity again, I guess, eh? And if we want to file a complaint, we went to the police. We've informed the police that Denise, myself, and Carrie, as witnesses, were brought into the police station. We, we went into the police station voluntarily and gave statements. Again, which is recorded. Allowed to be recorded. I have a copy of it. Okay. Um, not a word. Didn't hear anything. They quietly put it to bed. It's coming up on the two-year anniversary, so the office of the lawyer advisor is going to be taking over the estate probably if somebody else hasn't already done it, and it's quietly getting put away. Again, because of lack of access to having the proper record reflected in the record. It's a pattern of behavior. Pattern of behavior denotes criminal activity because in order to, de to detect criminal activity, it is determined by, by pattern of behavior and intent. Intent is also determined by pattern of behavior. So here we are. We're coming up on 40 minutes. I think I'm done here. The point is this. This, everybody, this is for everybody. The taxpayers, if they're doing a loan right now, that is on a false value that now gets put onto the tax roll as a burden at the full false value. This is only two properties and four that he owns. I guarantee all four are, de are defective. It certainly calls into question what exactly is the purpose of the fire department. Because go see for yourself. We're in the middle of a fire correction next door because it had failed a fire. Like they gave him the license, which means it was supposed to have passed the fire inspection in order to get the license. But immediately after, they're here making corrections because it didn't pass. It wasn't done. Over here, we find out later they only had one smoke detector and the battery was bad. Go see the video. I mean, it was not, they gave a license for this one too. And this property is worse than 100A. But you have to ask yourself, notwithstanding is a legal term. It's in, it is from the crown. That is the, the absolute power of the crown. No matter what happens, you are notwithstanding, which means I don't have to listen to you. They created the same situation in Brantford. They start building a housing project where they're not allowed to. You come make a, a rebuttal against it using the law. They tie you up in the process. They get you to a hearing and they go, guess what? If you don't do it exactly the way we want, we're just going to go, we don't have to listen to you. It's exactly what they just did here with ex-party and what they're doing. But the problem is, this is a crime. You are deliberately, in our opinion, and the evidence shows, you are you, your persons, including fire inspectors, police, and others all governed by the Municipal Act are giving misrepresentation and fraud to the public. And that seems to be all you are. So May 21st, if there is not at least a minimum inspection done on here and it's not done completed by the hearing on June 11th, this is now a tort action of misfeasance. And misfeasance and malfeasance survives any landlord tenant. The writing's on the wall with what's going on here for landlord tenant and what they're doing with this rental license and how they're abusing the lawful process. And let me just inform you, if you don't think that we have power or merit in what we're saying here, Steve Ross was the solicitor of record for City of Waterloo. He has not had his contract renewed or he has been removed. He is now working for a law firm in Waterloo. So if we, here we have, I've set out one document saying, prove the license for this year. And Atlas Property Group not only abandons their hearing at landlord tenant but they close permanently in december so november 4th they they and this is lisa nade on putting it forward for them hey right? all they do is overwhelm you with a whole bunch of bullshit and prevent you from putting in so we are also asking for i i got in touch with the ilc again independent living surrenders and i'm asking for your assistance with just putting this together because Human Rights Legal Sports Center says there's no claim for human rights because I'm the scariest guy out there, I guess. Anyway, we hope you support us. 
you need to get in touch with all the powers that be. I put their links down below. Get in touch with them and tell them it's time for a $450 inspection. We need an answer to this. And to do anything else is criminal. We hope you support us. We hope you support each other. We need to support each other because the only way we get through this is to end them doing this. And this is it all because if they're out there undermining, con by, by writing contracts undermining the very law that they're supporting to uphold, I think there's a problem in Houston. Anyway, Chris Bacon on behalf of Marshall Street Tenant Association, I hope everybody's well, be well, try and stay safe, keep your head above water, seek the truth. And you know there's a problem when it's not me that's doing this to them, it's not Carrie, it's not disability, it's the truth. And thank God we documented it because if we didn't, who, who would know? And I guess this is why Trudeau is a little worried about getting stuff on the air, eh? Well, your gig is up. And I still challenge you to a boxing match because I'd really like to punch you in the face with a boxing glove on for charity, of course. Come on, what are you afraid of? Hey, maybe you could send Telford. Maybe she'll tell me that uh, you can't do it, eh? You know, see to evil, hear to evil, speak no evil is a, is a way of life. The only way you defeat evil is look it in the eye and tell it it's a bully and call it out into the street because guess what, they're cowards. And I've been able to do this with just a little bit of knowledge and my experience over the last 18 years, but let me be clear. I will press play. This is the biggest human rights case in history and we can stop them in their damn tracks. It's a legal issue. Thank you. Have a good day. I hope you're well. Be well. Did I even get that?